everyone ready? Yeah, no, I think we're good. Is this the most emotional Michael we've ever seen, especially in episodes three and four? Mm. I'd like to think so. Um, it is one of the challenges of his character is that everything has life and death. Every scene is high stakes. Uh, but Michael's the guy with the plan. He's the guy who's constantly MacGyvering some bit of business and everyone else is watching, waiting for him to hurry it up. Um, but he has feelings. Uh, so to find moments alone where he can express what is really going on under the surface of driving all this action um, is important as far as the story. and so satisfying as an actor to play because every once in a while you have to lose control to show control. Mm. So, out of the cast, who would you say is most likely to be able to escape prison in real life? Oh. Who's the most capable? I think we're all screwed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, not me. <laughs> I don't know about Brian. Um, I don't know. That's, that's a good one. I don't you've, know. Seen, you've seen me try to pull the yeah, yeah, I mean, well, I'm, You're certainly not on the guy, <laughs> even though you <laughs> pulled from him uh, on the show. Um, I don't, that's a good question. I'm not sure. So what was it like shooting in Morocco as opposed to Vancouver and shooting on sound, sound stages in LA? And if you could take uh, a break to any other country, would you want to take it anywhere else? Um, shooting in Morocco was very difficult. Um, you know, you're dealing with a whole host of things, primarily the weather. And uh, we were jet lagged for most of the shoot anyway. And we hit the ground running. Uh, we were working incredibly long hours in incredibly trying conditions. Um, and for me personally, Morocco was a bit of a, uh, a nightmare, if you will. Um, I had a major accident there, and, uh, but I was able to bounce back and recover from it. Was that an accident filming Prison Break? Yeah. An iron bar fell on my head and shattered my nose. And, um, yeah, so it was pretty intense. How late in the uh, filming did that happen? It was about six, seven days in. And um, yeah, I had to. Um, get out of there and uh, they run through, pull me on the helicopter to Casablanca to do emergency surgery and what have you. Um, the doctor said I should have, I, you should take at least six weeks off. That was the recommended medical advice and I didn't do that. <laughs> no, he was back to work a week and a half later. It's dumb. <laughs> now, what is it like revisiting these characters? I mean, you know the show. The show's coming back. It's it's been there before. You guys have worked together on numerous projects. Does it feel like putting on an old, comfortable pair of shoes and just jumping back into it, or is you know is it a different feeling this go around? It's familiar. It's unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. Michael Schofield is in me. He's never going to go away. Mm -hmm. But um, I have changed as a man. Ten years older than when we started the original series. So when I put those shoes on, um, the shoes may be the same, but the man standing on this. Different. Yeah, it's a very good point. Um, I would say that going into it, um, I had no reservations. I thought I was very familiar with Lincoln, but as the words were slipping out of my mouth, I realized that I was a lot older than the last time I played him, and he was slightly more grounded, different, bigger, just a lot more weight. This is a result of getting older and the stuff I've gone through personally. Yeah, actually, to expand on that, especially with you, with, um, with the life experiences you've been through and advocating for mental health, do you think that has kind of, you know, really changed your experience, experiences between the last season and where you are now, um, working with the character and where he is? Have you worked with that at all? Uh, yeah, it informs my, my everyday experience and it informs me as a performer, for sure. Um, I've walked a long road and I've seen and experienced a lot of things. Um, one of the gifts of being uh, where I am now, where I can talk openly about um, being queer, um, having mental health issues, uh, it means I can walk on set and instead of playing multiple parts, um, like the guy who has it all together while I'm playing Michael Schofield, I can just focus on Michael Schofield. It's made me a stronger artist. What did you do to build the character of Canyon? Uh, I let Michael drift farther toward the dark side. Um, 
He'd always hung out for me in the grayscale. Like he's a good man, up to something good, but a lot of people died so that this this guy could go free. Yeah. So by the end of the original series, it made sense to me, story-wise, that he laid down his life, um, that he uh, paid the ultimate price to kind of make things balanced and even. When the reboot picks up, it's seven years later, he's in this prison in Yemen, and he's almost unrecognizable. So there is kind of the pleasure, I think, in the fans anticipating these reunions, but will the characters even recognize each other is, is the question on all of that. Now, I read that your mother's side of the family is Lebanese and Syrian. Mm -hmm. And although Lebanon and Syria, or Lebanon and uh, Yemen are two totally different col countries and cultures, was there some sort of like draw to the region because of your familial background? Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly had a good time um, in Morocco, and there was something in me that resonated with the desert experience, for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, I kept my focus micro the entire time because the character has so much to do every scene. Um, and I left uh, the kind of geopolitical aspect of it to Paul Schering and the writer and creators. Do you feel a sense that you've come full circle from where Prison Break began, where now Lincoln's on the outside trying to get mm -hmm. Michael out? <laughs> no, I don't, think, I don't think it's full circle. I think, uh, you know, there's, there's still some more to explore. With the character, mm. and I, 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 I think the storyline is well. Can you talk about Lincoln's headspace a little bit, where he is in the first episode, kind of where? He yeah, is? I mean, he, um, you know, Lincoln's always struggled um, with life, and uh, that was just um, uh, that, that intensified once uh, Michael died, and uh, he he was lost. He couldn't get his bearings. You know, Michael is his compass, if you will, in life. And uh, once he lost his brother, was it. he just doesn't have the self-discipline and the uh, that tenacity, that will to. He's a survivor, but um, he's a tragic survivor. And uh, once uh, he um, realized that Michael was alive, um, the hope was restored. And that's what I mean by I think there's still more to explore with Lincoln. And surely Lincoln has learned some lessons from Michael over the course of their experiences yeah. together that will help him in the yes. future escape. Uh -huh. So is there one specific lesson that you think is going to be really coming in handy for him <laughs> from past season? I, I think it's more of an instinctual thing for Lincoln. You know, he's been around his brother, he knows his brother, he knows his brother's a genius. Mm -hmm. And just being around his brother, um, some of that, that behavior uh, rub, rubs off him without him even uh, realizing it. And also, you know, Lincoln's determined to get his brother, and Lincoln's a, a bull in the china shop. I mean, that's who he is, that's what he is, and uh, he's gonna use that method to get his brother. Uh, he's been in, uh, this is the fourth prison he's been in over the course of the <laughs> season. <laughs> in, uh, in a way, uh, does, does prison feel like a home of sorts? <laughs> Uh, no, 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 like to to Michael, is he so used to prison that any prison is manageable? Uh, I think it is, or has become familiar, which which is tragic. Um, Dominic made a great point um, about um, there are literal prisons, and then there's the prison that is your mind. And Michael's been in this Yemen prison for four years now. He spent the majority of his adult life on the run. Um, can you ever really leave that behind? Um, what's waiting for you on the other side of the wall? When he's finally reunited with Sarah and his son, um, how can he be with them in the same way? Uh, is it better off if he maybe leaves them alone? Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you.